Our fifth story out front, shocking allegations of rape. Two high school football players in Steubenville, Ohio, have been arrested and charged with raping a 16-year-old girl. After images and stories of the alleged assault began circulating on the web. Hello, I'm Todd Starnes. A New York City man could be facing a manslaughter charge for defending his wife against a would-be rapist. Now, police are investigating allegations that a teenage girl camping at the Latitude Festival in Suffolk has been raped. Detectives are now hunting a gang of four men in connection with the attack, which is alleged to have happened in woods on the Henham Park estate last night. Malcolm Robertson. <laughs> I killed a man. There was nothing too special, too horrifying. I came across someone who deserved to die, so I put the knife in their head. Left them lying on the floor. For two minutes he lay there, shuddering, spasming, dying. It was in a park at 12.21. There were 30 trees, seven benches, two paths, and one clearing. The entire situation occurred on the bench that was furthest from the road. There were two people sitting there, a man and a woman, but the man, he was older than the girl. I was walking through, coming back from a friend. I'd only had one drink. I don't really drink much, it's bad for the body. I was coming through, step after step after step after scream. The wind blew through the trees and the leaves rustled. Another scream. A car drove past its headlights, cutting through the darkness like a hot knife in butter. A third scream. And all was still. snapped to where the noise had come from, one like no other, one of genuine fear. And then I saw it, the girl on the bench. She was 15, her name Elizabeth. She went to St. Joseph High School. She had good grades, good friends, and no worries. Her hair was strawberry blonde, her eyes hazel. She was pretty, yes, pretty in an innocent way. And she was, she was pinned to the floor. A hand on one side of her face pushing the other into the ground, a thumb forced in her mouth. Her legs were spread wide, painfully wide, her skirt thrown up over her body. She pushed away from me, she kept pushing, but she just wasn't strong enough. For a split second, I just watched. 
blown away at the reality of it all. I mean, I thought this only happened on TV, only happened in films, or somewhere disconnected from me, and yet here I was in a park at 12.21 watching. He pushed into her. I began to run, my heart jumping, racing, forced into her. I was sprinting, my breath shallow. He didn't stop. A tear fell down her face. I reached into my pocket and grabbed the knife that I always keep on me. When my vision was going, all I could see was the area ahead of me, him and her. I grabbed him by the head and shoulders and went up the top, two feet away, my arm on his head, my leg on his gut. And then I brought the knife down hard into his sternum. He screamed. Ah! <coughs> I pulled it out and felt little resistance and brought it down again further up into his neck. He reached up to try and get it, but his arms danced by his side, his legs jumping. I pushed him off of me. And I laid there, blood staining my clothes. Two feet away, she cried. She sobbed. I killed a man. I killed a rapist. I killed a monster. Yet, yeah. I killed a man. Britain's High Court has agreed to hear the case of a severely disabled man who wants a doctor to be able to kill him legally. Tony Nicholson has been paralysed from the neck down since a stroke in 2005. He says his life is intolerable and he wants legal protection for any doctor willing to help him end it. Hello, I'm Jeremy Vine and this is Panorama. The mother accused of killing her bedridden daughter. I don't use this room really, you know, it's just, um, yeah, it's just in room. What happened the night she died? It took only an hour and nine minutes for a jury to decide that the doctor who boasted of committing euthanasia wasn't guilty of murder. The verdict doesn't mean that the jury believed that so-called mercy killing was not a crime because the doctor, despite his boasts, had denied the charge, full stop. But the decision has opened wide the question of whether Britain is willy-nilly moving towards an environment in which doctors may be able to help patients on their way out of this life. Could case two please come to the stand? Can you please describe to us the events that occurred on January the 7th, 2015? Starting in 2008, me and my wife Katie were on our annual holiday to Italy. We loved it there. We went to the same town, to the same square every night. We would dance. We loved to dance. She, she, she always knew how to make me smile. Then, she just collapsed. And from that moment on, my life got turned upside down. Katie had something called locked-in syndrome. She meant she was paralyzed from the neck down. She couldn't move. She couldn't walk. She couldn't even talk to me. Eight years later, I would always sit next to her every night and hold her hand and tell her her favourite stories. Just tell her what I did in my day. She 
opportunity to communicate with you through our eyes. she lay was just airy and cold. The doctor's just given up on her. There's nothing I can do. But I'd never forget her. I'd never forget just how much she brightened my day. How special she made me feel. into those beautiful sad eyes and it was then when she gave me that look pain misery and death Then when I grabbed the pillow and Let's say the cops were following you. Yeah. Let's say they were following uh -huh. you and they did everything that you're, you're saying they did. Uh-huh. Nonetheless, yeah. you killed seven men. Yes, you And I'm did. asking you, what got you to kill the seven and men? And I'm telling you, because the cops let me keep killing them, Nick. Don't well, you not, get it? Not, not. Yeah, thanks a lot. I lost my fucking life because of it. Couldn't even get a fair trial. Couldn't even get a fair investigation or nothing. I couldn't even have my peels right. You sabotaged my ass, society, and the cops, and the system. A raped woman 
got executed. It was used for books and movies and shit. Blammer climbs, your election, everything else. I got a big finger in all your faces. Thanks a lot. You're inhuman. You're an inhumane bunch of fucking living bastards and bitches. And you're gonna get your asses nuked in the end. And pretty soon it's coming. Case three. I leave Carol Warnock's. <laughs> Can you tell us what happened with the seven dead men between October 1995 and February 2006? They, they got violent with me! Sorry, so I just defend myself. I wasn't going to let them beat the shit out of me or kill me either. The cops let me kill the rest of these guys to turn me into a serial killer. I did some soppy work, you know, and the cops knew who I was until Richard Mallory died. Bam! I left prints everywhere. I was no professional serial killer or murderer or whatever you want to call it. Those men deserve to die. Each one of them! Fire Angel with me as a point of the gun and fire the shots! Bang! 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 I watched their blood pour out. Watched their bodies spasm. They deserved it. How are you feeling about tomorrow? Are you prepared? Oh, I'm alright with it. I'm, I'm ready to go. I, I've been tortured. They, they've been using sonic pressure on my head since 1997. They, they had a huge satellite on top of the compound that was, that was rigged to crush my head. There are two cards. One green. Innocent. One red. Guilty. You decide. My fate. My fate. My fate. Case number one. I killed a man. I killed a rapist. I killed a monster. I killed a man. You decide. Case number one, innocent. Case number two, I killed my wife, <laughs> my beautiful wife, but she was in so much pain and misery, there's nothing I could do. You decide. Case number two, innocent. Thank you. <coughs> Case three. Those bastards and bitches made me do it. They knew I do. They knew what I was doing. Those men deserve to die. You decide. Case three, guilty. Do you want to burn it in hell? Oh. <laughs> 